Okay, I have another X570 board to show you guys today. But before we get into it, I just wanted to say that with these X570 boards, the $200 price point is really where you want to kind of aim for value. Because after that, the value to, to money kind of ratio just sort of just drops off. And so you get a lot more value out of it if you stick with the $200 boards. So I just wanted to say that first. So this board here is the MSI Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. It's like $210. The PCI configuration is pretty much the same as the other boards in this sort of price range. So we have one 16x slot, one 4x, and three 1x slots. And I think the past three motherboards I looked at right around this price range have all exactly the same configuration. And if you go online, you'll see tons of these boards, unless you get super high end, have this configuration. It's just easier with the PCIe Gen 4, and it's cheaper to make this way. So for the rear IO, we do kind of have a little bit of a better setup. Four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, two USB Gen 2 ports, one of which is Type-C port, and then we also have a couple 2.0 ports. I will say I really like the layout of this board, especially the fan connectors and most of your USB audio and any of your other internal connectors are on the bottom edge of the board. I think that's like a really nice touch. And I also like that MSI didn't screw up the SATA configuration. Like the blast board I looked at, the, the Tough Gaming Plus, the SATA configuration just all over the place. MSI stuck with a just regular old configuration, but they have this sort of cutout to make plugging in your cables a lot easier. So I really do like this VRM. So if you wanna talk about the MOSFETs and the inductors, it's it's not the greatest VRM. It's not bad, you're gonna be fine with it. But what I like about it is the bigger heatsink on the side is huge. It actually takes up all the shroud and they actually use the shroud space for the VRM. And I think this is just the way that all motherboard manufacturers should be doing their VRMs. Now with that being said, they don't exactly have a lot of surface area on this VRM, but it does have this sort of like V cutout. So with a downdraft cooler, you can get a lot of air. The other VRM does have a lot more surface area for its size, but that's on the SOC side, so it doesn't make a lot of heat. So it doesn't matter as much. So it's actually been quite a while since I've actually used the MSI board. And the biggest issue I have with the board is just the BIOS. But if you can navigate it enough to set your settings, set your overclock, it's going to be fine. All your options are actually there. It's just kind of like the layout just kind of sucks a little bit. Okay, so here's the BIOS. And you just have to press F7 to get to basically what they're calling advanced mode. And this reminds me why I don't usually get MSI boards. So basically everything is sectioned off in these tabs here. For example, if we go to settings, it's just like general settings. And this board does do pretty good at memory overclocking. So if we go to advanced DRAM config, I'm running like 3800, CL 14, 14, 16, 28. And it's relatively stable. I've been playing games on it, doing some benchmarks on it. It seems fine. And yeah, it's, it's kind of a mess to navigate though. So like if I can find the power settings, it, it's kind of a confusing BIOS, but all your settings are there. Finally found the power settings, so digit all power is where you're gonna enable some of your over voltage low line stuff and it's just generally a confusing bios now if you're used to like msi then this probably won't be an issue everything is sectioned off in these little squares instead of tabs on top and it makes if you're not familiar with the board it makes it really awkward to navigate so for example say we change a setting so we'll change this to like 1.25 1.125 we have to actually go to settings and then go to save and then go to save changes and reboot so yeah it's kind of a confusing bios but it gets the job done you have all the options you need in it and it's fine it's just kind of hard to navigate this is actually a nice board for what you pay it's got wi-fi it's got high-end usb ports and the sata ports are all together and not annoyingly separated um, but other than that, it does its job. It overclocks memory really well. I got to 3800 CL14. Well, 1414, 14, 16. So, it, it's fast. The memory layout is really nice. It's really good. 
and definitely take advantage of the IMC of the new Ryzen CPUs. So there's no real issue there. I will say a couple things is that if you want Intel Ethernet, this does not have it. It uses Realtek Ethernet. And only one of the M.2 slots are actually have a heatsink over them. So if you plan on using like a RAID array with the M.2 drives, you might want to get like a separate heatsink for your second drive. But other than that, it has pretty much anything you could want in a board. And I think it's a really good bargain. And I would recommend somebody pick this up if they're looking for a new Ryzen build and they want really good memory overclocking. If you like this video, consider commenting down below, give me a like or a dislike, and just tell me what you think down below in the comment section, and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, bye. And this is kind of a really nice board compared to the other X570 boards for the money you pay. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got lots of high-speed USB cables.